it was extremely disturbing that my interview in regards to my son got canceled because they were not allowed to sexually exploit me as a female. That's disgusting. is Nina Unrated. She is an entertainer, a former exotic dancer, a YouTuber, and she's got an OnlyFans. Altogether, she has a big following, she's making lots of money, and another great thing about her is that in this video, it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm not gonna talk so much because Nina can hold her own. She don't need nobody to really defend her, she's got it. But, you know me now, I had to say a little something. If you have not seen my other videos, I did create a playlist on Fresh and Fit. Go ahead and watch the intro, part one, part two, part three, and then watch this video. Let's get to the story. So Nina Unrated has been on Fresh and Fit's podcast a couple times. Before the filming was happening, she had a little story to tell. They all tried to have sex. My, uh... Fresh was like, oh, come back to my spot. I got to go walk my dog or whatever. So what's up, what's up, what's up? And I'm like, yo, I'm not fucking you. I had to tell these men verbally out of my mouth, I am not here to have sex with you, bro. Stop begging for pussy. I'm not going to fuck you. Oh, my bad, my bad. My, I didn't mean to offend you. Now you didn't offend me. I'm just letting you know that I will never fuck you. The producer, oh, yeah, let's go ahead and grab something to eat it real quick before the, inter before the interview or whatever. I'm like, okay, I thought it was protocol. We go to fucking dinner and the bill comes. And guess who had to pick up the fucking $50 bill because the producer couldn't even afford the fucking bill and is living out of a fucking Airbnb in Brickle. They don't even, like, the producer doesn't even have his own place. Brings me back to an Airbnb trying to fuck. I, I told him, hell no, I'm not going to have sex with you. That's not what I came here for. I came here to do an interview. She laid down the law. She let it be known what it was. And of course, nothing occurred because she would not allow it. And she still filmed with the crew. Turns out she did a great job because all of their supporters wanted her back on. And this is when they confirmed to meet up again to do a collaboration on an interview about her son. Now I don't know the backstory on that, but apparently she did lose custody of her son and she is currently fighting to get him back. And to her, this interview with Fresh and Fit would be great to have. Might as well since Fresh and Fit asked her to come back again. But then, of course, they had to fuck shit up. Fresh and Fit posted the messages between the two. So we're gonna go ahead and start from the beginning. Now these messages are the conversation they had after confirming for an interview. I want you guys to understand, from August 1st to August 4th, me and Fresh had been working and using this um, thing, spin the wheel, okay? We had a concept that we wanted to try on Patreon. So, Nina, doing what she does for work, that's what leads to this conversation. I was like, yo, we should do this Patreon thing. And because I'm thinking she could benefit too. We're going to give her the content and advertise it, right? Yep. So she goes, I go, sorry for the late response. How long did you want to stay in town? She goes, it depends right now. I was only planning to come in to do our show after I was done in Houston. How long do you need to stay in Miami for? I can fly in on Friday the 6th. What time does the show start? Okay, we do it at night. Also, do you film sex scenes for your OnlyFans? Guys, there's a deliberate reason I asked this. The reason why I asked this was because I needed to see how far she goes on her OnlyFans and what she's comfortable with doing yep. before I propositioned her to do this Patreon thing with us because I didn't want to make her comfortable. Uh, sorry, I didn't want to make her uncomfortable. Right. So she goes, why do you ask? I want to point out how many times Fresh and Fit asked her about sexual content. And that was the first time. I told them that I do not do adult sexual content without being compensated for it, and my fee starts at $2,500. I said, I'm not new to YouTube, I'm not new to social media, I know how social media works, and you cannot exploit my image sexually for your own financial gain and not pay me for it. I'm on OnlyFans, why would I go do some sexual video to put on some dude's Patreon to put money in his pocket? Are these motherfuckers pimps? Are y'all the Miami pimps? Are the digital Miami pimps? Please tell us in the chat. Is it what she's saying when it's like sexual like that? Because she's making it seem like, we're, oh, we're going to smash on camera. It is no. not even like that. To spin the wheel. Our content on Patreon like that is spin the wheel. It's not like sex online. It's that, not sex. That, that is not what we do. It's basically strip poker. So her taking that level is like, bro, like we didn't ask you to go on here and smash. Hell no. Yeah. And what level are you speaking of? Because... 
she's not saying sex she's saying sexual which is what you're asking for because you're asking her if she's open to spinning the wheel topless that is sexual content you are using these women and their bodies because sex sells so she's not making something sound a certain way it is what it is sexual content so i see that she's offended so i i, I pull it back a little bit you know because at this point i'm amicable with nina Oh, don't take it like that. It's out of pure curiosity. We started doing topless interviews with porn stars and adult content creators with Spin the Wheel. Topless. That's it. That's it. Topless. That's all. Okay, listen, guys. How about you guys drop your pants, you know, let your penis show. That's it. So I can make money off of it. You won't get a dime. All you gotta do is show your penis. That's all. Since we are slowly getting into the spicier content for Patreon, I'm trying to learn. Humbling myself. We give the women that participate a copy of the interview for their own platform, such as OnlyFans, etc., no offense if you took it that way. Yeah. So I try to I try to be polite here. Yeah. I'm not trying to offend you, but it just so happens that you do this for work. So I'm asking. She goes, I do not get offended. I'm a businesswoman. I am not new to social media, and I know what my sexual adult content will make you thousands of dollars. I've been on social media for 10 years, and I've been on OnlyFans for over five. Okay, she's pretty experienced. Trust me, I know the value of my image. That's how I survive every day. If you have any questions about adult content, I will be more than happy to answer them for you. We can, uh, uh, for you, can have their list ready when I get there. So I go, so do you want to do a nude show or not? And here you go for the second time asking her if she's down to do some sexual content. She goes, so are you going to pay me or not? So I say, and she goes, I don't do adult content for free. I respond, you're getting a one-on-one -on -one interview for free in front of our audience. We typically charge around... 10,000 for that. Yep. So it's an equal value exchange, but I completely understand if that is a no from you. The reason why I posted what we're worth was to let her know that we're not trying to rip her off. You have said, and also people who have worked with you have said that you guys do not charge any of the girls and any of the guests. You actually pay the male guests to be on your show. And this is a known fact. You don't charge anybody $10,000. She goes, uh, I'll see you Friday. I've already booked my flight and hotel. I'm not going to do adult content. That's not something I'm interested in. That will be there to do the interview. Thank you. Then I, then, well, then I let her know. Well, how do we benefit then? What benefit do you get from this? Here's the benefit that you get from this fresh and fit. The $500 super chats, the $300 super chats, the $100 um, snap um, super chats, the $50 stickers, the $20 stickers. And there she goes, turning it down again. So I go, that one-on-one -on -one interviews, uh, interview benefits you immensely. We need something in return. Or you can get us King Sid on the show. I text King Sid so fast, like, yo, King, I know that I gave you these people's number before. Don't fuck with them because they're pressing me way too hard for you and this shit ain't making sense. King Sid, don't fuck with these dudes at all, okay? Don't fuck with these dudes because they've been pressing me about you since the day I met them. Just like you take pride in your adult content, we take pride in our loyal audience. You saw the super chats come in, so people support us for real. Business, never personal. She them. tried to say that those super chats came in because of her. No, those super chats came in because of us, and you know that we have a loyal audience that supports us. Shout out to the chat, by I the way. Shout out to like, the chat, man. Yo, we love you guys. Bro, but for girls to come in here and say, oh, without me, you want to get super chats? Uh, yeah, these girls do say that because it's true. They do get super chats on their own, but very little. When they do have the women on their show, they make thousands of dollars. They literally get 200 super chats, three, 500 super chats. They make lots of money off of them. And it shows in their views. I'm not lying to you. Since the drama happened, their views did go down. But let's look back before the drama. When the women were on their shows, they were making lots of views. And this is just to name a few. 217,000, 206,000, 239,000, 313,000, 281,000. God damn, these girls be making views. I tried to find videos of these guys without the girls with better numbers. It was hard to find. So I had to go back a little bit more to find those better views. And this is what I found. 25,000. 41,000, 31,000, 42,000, 37,000. I mean, <laughs> think about it. The more views you have, the more people are watching, the more super chats are coming in, especially the amount of money they're giving. So yeah, it's the girls that's making you money. And their response was like, fuck these hoes. 
We don't give a fuck about these fucking Miami bitches. Fuck these bitches. These bitches are dumb as fuck. And I'm saying to myself, these are women that you're bringing onto your show that are making you guys a lot of money. And you guys are talking about these women like they're fucking trash ass bitches. So she goes, you saw the super chats come in. Uh, you will benefit because you're not giving me a cut from any of the income that you're making off the vid videos from the super chats, nor any of the income from the video clips that you're going to put up uh, to put upload on a second channel. Nor am I going to get compensated for my flyer hotel. Uh, this, uh, well, Nina right there just proved the point that we don't pay girls to come on our show. That's another allegation that a lot of people have hit yeah, us with. We don't you pay girls to come on your show. No, we don't. we don't. They don't. They don't pay the girls directly, but they do pay money to get girls on the show. Same thing to me. Allende, who's a former employee, was actually the recruiter. So let's hear what he's got to say. Female guests were not paid to come on that show. Not even the Danny Banks or the Kikis were paid to come on that show. Not even the girls with a million followers. Um, like like Mia Francis, girls like that, they, they were paid to come on the show. But here's the thing though, I, 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 I brought them on the show and they paid me. But the overall point is, they didn't get the girls to come on on their own accord. I actually have a lot of respect for you and I'm quite shocked at the way you're approaching this. I do not do adult content for free. She's turning down the sexual content. I mean, how many times does this woman have to tell you that she's not gonna do it? When I spoke to you about my son and I told you what was going on, you were excited about the interview because you knew it would get me one step closer to my son. Uh, your audience requested this interview. You asked your audience, should we bring her back for one-on-one? -on -one? And everyone in the chat room answered with the regular, with the number one, okay? That's the only reason why you offered me the exclusive interview to get me closer to my son, and it is because you respect your audience and honor them that you want to honor their request. So when you say, how are you due to profit, maybe you can look back at the video and see how much money you have actually made and will make off the exclusive interview, which I am getting no money from, the only opportunity this gives me as an opportunity to get closer to my son, which I haven't seen in over five years. So I agreed to do the interview because you seem like a good person and you told me that you work for the FBI. Okay, you're not the first person to ask me for my story. You're the first person that I agreed to give the story to because I saw you as man of the law. My respect for you was automatic, so I'm very confused and a little bit disappointed on how I'm being handled right now. I myself also am a professional, which is why I care myself like a professional. Never have I disrespected you or anyone in your staff Know, know your audience. Are you saying that if you can't exploit my sexual image, you're not going to do the interview? Could you please just make yourself clear so I don't waste your time? I've already booked my flight nice. in my hotel. And then she shows me Insta her YouTube videos of her talking about her son from her, one of her channels, right? Yeah. She goes, you're either going to help me get closer to my son or you're not. It's really just that simple. Please let me know if you're going to honor your word and go through with this interview or you're going to cancel I'll, and I go I'll talk with the team and she says thank you even though it was their idea to have her back on for a one-on-one -on -one interview and confirmed to talk about her son as you already saw the conversation has changed to sexual content so they want some sexual content and Nina just wants to know listen I'm not doing it let me know if this one-on-one -on -one interview is still gonna happen because you're not making yourself clear okay so this is a message with me Chris and and Walt okay yeah. grand rising this is August 5th all right, next day. Grand Rising, I'll be there on Friday. My flight has been booked and hotel. So she just booked her stuff without confirming with me. Unless I get a cancel confirmation from the owner, Myron, please let me know prior to me boarding my flight tomorrow from Houston to Miami, Friday the 6th. Just so everyone on the same page, I will not be doing anything content affiliated with sexual content. I only agreed to the interview that was requested by our audience. There was never any talk about sexual content exchange for my exclusive interview that just came up as of recently. Thank you, blessings. Yes, we reserve the right to change our business uh, plan. Which they do, they do have the right to change the plan because no contract was signed. But why did you change that plan? It's clear in those messages and the reason behind that decision. It was not a good look for you to post those messages. So I go, hey Nina, I just spoke with the team and I personally, uh, uh, personally completely forgot we have an obligation to interview another YouTuber tomorrow and the day after. What reminded me? We can set up a potential interview in the future. And this interview was planned a month in advance and I forgot about it prior to our discussion. Who yep. was that? Daquan Wilshire. Daquan Wilshire. Our, our boy Daquan Wilshire. And Check you know the what? dates. Check, I'm it's gonna, all I'm gonna, there. I'm gonna show you guys right now. August 6, 2021. This was done what? August 5th, 2021. Yep. Okay? It was our Friday episode. Yep. So, uh, so she goes, and I'll show you guys the date. So she goes, oh, okay, no problem. I just spoke to King Sid, but okay. They told us they were gonna show us the date, proof that they had this already planned. But in that five hour stream, they never did. They only gave us the date that they did the podcast with this YouTuber, but they never showed us that this was previously planned. Do I believe them? With all those lies they said in that five hour podcast and in all the videos done by them? Of course I don't believe them, come on. So. We don't respond to her. 
for a bit, for a few hours, right? 2 o'clock p.m. She, kind of, she starts to realize what's going on. And if you heard that clearly, he said, we don't respond to her. And she's starting to realize what's going on. That means you literally are canceling on her. You're just not letting her know. But she's starting to realize it. Thank you, but I'm not interested in a future interview with Fresh and Fat. I conducted myself as a professional, and I do not take well to the sexual harassment that I've received. I refused to give them my sexual content or create sexual content for them to put on their Patreon after I booked a flight in a hotel. They canceled the interview. That is sexual harassment. You cannot tell somebody that, oh yeah, we have an interview, but if you really want this interview in exchange for the interview, uh, you're gonna have to show me some pussy on video. You're gonna have to show me some titties on video so that I can take your image, pimp it out, make more money off you, off my Patreon. Now you know what I'm about to do right now, right? What is sexual harassment? Sexual harassment is behavior characterized by the making of unwelcome and inappropriate sexual remarks or physical advances in a workplace or other professional or social situation. And Myron knows this. He's worked in law enforcement. He knows exactly what he's doing. You used to be an ex-FBI agent, but you're sexually harassing the women that come on your show. This is all the tall, big one, the FBI agents, the one that used to work for the police department. Like if these are the people that are working for our police departments and our FBI agents, and this is their mentality about women, why are they even working in these facilities? It's a good thing that he had to resign because I would not want that man to, as a cop anywhere near me. It is disturbing shit, okay? You ladies better be very careful. When they used to work, you know, in like armed forces or police officers or they were in the army or anything like that, they have this different type of entitlement where they feel like they could do no wrong because they've already been in a position of power with the law. So they feel like they can push people to a certain level. And I was just very disturbed by it. I'm not some thirsty YouTuber. I have my own following. Like, I don't need that. You know what I'm saying? And before I saw that, I actually thought about this. This man has worked in law enforcement and has investigated situations like human trafficking. And it made me wonder. He had to deal with a lot of women who were victims of human trafficking. I want to know exactly how he treated these women. He already believes women are beneath them and belittles them and demeans them. How did you treat these victims when you were with them? I'm so glad that they asked you to resign. I never agreed to adult content and after I invest funds into flights and hotel because you had already confirmed the dates twice, you canceled the interview because I wouldn't agree to allowing you to explain me sexually for your own financial gain. Number one, we never canceled the interview. Number two, no one sexually harassed you because I gave you another option to get on the show and I gave you our worth and what it is because she's the one that made a business like that. So then I made a business right back. Being sexually harassed by an ex-federal FBI agent slash undercover cop isn't a proper way to conduct business. Which is not true. I was made to feel extremely uncomfortable. Okay, uncomfortable doing what you already do? Yes, she means what she says. Let's make this clear. Just because she does sexual content there, there, and there does not mean that she has to do sexual content with you. Okay. And after saying no to the adult content, the interview was canceled. Thank you. It was never canceled. She lied again. Yep. And no, she didn't lie again. By you not responding hours later, you said that she was starting to realize what you were doing. You were canceling the interview. After saying no to the adult content, the interview was canceled. Thank you, but I'm not interested in this sort of YouTube collaboration. So she's trying to reject us because we didn't respond to her. Please learn how to respect fellow YouTubers and peers. This experience wasn't at all what I would expect from a man that used to serve our country. I wish you the best of luck with your interviews in the future. Blessings. And then she took to Instagram Live to contort the story that we just showed you guys now and say that we tried to force her to do it and she didn't want to do it. No, she did want to do it, but she wanted to be paid and we refused to pay her. <laughs> that is not true. She told you from the very beginning that she was not doing it. If she was to do something like that, that's usually how much she would charge, but she's letting you know she's not doing no sexual content for you. You got upset because she was telling you no. How else do you react when you hear a woman tell you no in certain situations? And that's not me implying anything. That's me wondering. You promised an interview and took it back because you did not get what you wanted. Now look how mad he gets in this next clip. No, she did want to do it, but she wanted to be paid and we refused to pay her. Guys. That's the difference. Do you see how people can twist the narrative and take out of context? One While Fresh is talking about who knows what, this man is angry. Look at his fist, sign lying to you. Oh my God, temper. Definitely has issues. 
and his face, though. <laughs> Listen, this is his own facial expressions. I'm just pointing it out. And I also want to touch on something before I end the series. They've always taught their viewers to not pay for box. That means not to ever pay women to have sex. We don't like paying for box. We don't do it. But if you do it, we understand. Well, we tell guys you're not going to get that genuine burning desire. Now, we are all clear that he paid a recruiter to get women on the show. So you are paying for women. Let's start off with that. As you come to find out that Myron Gaines himself, right, the so-called pickup artist, the master, has his own Seeking Arrangements account, his own profile, all right? This is on the web. You can find it. This man's out here talking about don't pay for box, don't pay for box. He's on a website for sugar daddies and sugar babies. Okay. There's nothing wrong with being on sugar baby sites. The problem here is you're teaching these young men not to pay for box, but these sugar babies are going on those websites specifically to seek men who have money. You think they just want to come and date you and see you spend all of your money on yourself? No, they know that you will be spending money on them. You pay for box. Now, I wanted to add this clip from a previous show because I found it very interesting. One of the women pointed out that he was on the sugar baby site and look how defensive he gets. This nigga is the biggest, the biggest um, member of seekingarrangement.com. So nice attempt, but I've told guys many times. No, it's, no openly... attempt. it's no attempt. No, no, no. I'm just saying I yo, don't yo, watch yo, this show all the yo, time. You need it. You need to stop. I don't want... Now this is the funny part. He tries to get her back, but it actually blew up in his face. If you want to pull cards, you're the one that needed a fucking lift payment to get you over here. Okay? Yeah, of course. So if you're going to be rude about that and of try course. to pull some cards, let's do it for real. He just pretty much admitted that him and his business had to pay for her ride to get there. Spending money on a woman. And you didn't even get the box. And pay attention and listen to what she says. You're the I one that's getting the money paid. All right, that's cool. But you know what? At this point, now you're going to get up and you're going to leave the premises. <laughs> she said, I don't pay for anything. So you fell into the trap. You paid for this girl's ride. Didn't get the box. And now you're pissed off that she's literally putting you on blast on live. And what happens when Myron gets mad? Kicks her out. It's just very interesting how these men lie and pretend to be something that they're not. If you want to get a woman, be yourself. Are you planning on lying to these women every day for the rest of your life? Trying to portray someone that you're not? That'll be wasted time, wasted energy, and a waste of life. Give yourself some justice. Be yourself. Now, before I end this video, I also want to point out that these guys are desperate to gain back their subscribers. They said they don't care about losing subscribers. That doesn't matter. It's all in the views. Well, you lost subs and you lost views. And even though you said that you don't care about your subscriber count, here you are posting on the community post a giveaway. And the only way that they can win these prizes, expensive prizes by the way, is by subscribing. Oh yeah, subscribe to their channel. Not only that, but you had to share their links and sign up. At this point, they are desperate. The subscribe count, I guess, does matter. That is the end of this Fresh and Fit series. I hope you enjoyed it. I put a lot of work and effort in every single one of these videos. And if you're interested in watching, go ahead and click onto this playlist. That will give you the intro, part one through part four. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace.